Hello, everybody. My name is Andy Bennett, and welcome to another episode of The Streaming Ones. We've got a special episode for all y'all today. We're going to be doing an in-depth preview of Issue 13. Hey, folks. Hi. How's it going? Hello. So, I'm Andy Bennett. I'm your community manager. To my left here is Andrew Riker. He's our senior systems designer. Lead. And, of course, <laughs> that is Roman Amiel. All right. <laughs> He's lead, lead system yeah, designer. Lead system designer. I'm so sorry. Yeah. My mistake. All right. My mistake. My mistake. <laughs> Not senior. Um, but, and then of course this is Ramon, this is our game director, and thank you for joining us today. Lead designer, game director, it's like all the titles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Like we just share them. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> uh, hi everyone, welcome to uh, a new episode. Um, so a bit of a special episode today, we're not going to be um, streaming much of the game, instead we're going to be talking about um, everything we've been working on like uh, over the last uh, few months. Uh, we're going to be telling you everything there is to know about issue 13, everything is gonna come to the game really soon. Uh, and we're pretty much going to start right away. So, like last time, I actually got a little presentation. I was gonna be able to follow what is gonna happen today, so let's get going. It's just as fancy as last time. It is. <laughs> it's all my, all my Photoshop skills are put, put, put to good use in there. I'm sorry it's actually a little dark. I hope it's not as dark as it is on the screen here. It was pretty good on my computer and then moving into that TV makes it very dark. So I hope you can read it properly. Uh, but in any case, um, we're going to be talking about, so the new stories are going to be part of uh, issue 13, uh, as well as the long promised um, PVP updates who are going to be part of this issue. Uh, we're going to give you an update on the group finder. Uh, and then, of course, it's December, uh, so we're going to be talking about Christmas. And then, you know, at the end, we have a few, a uh, few indication about what's going to happen next year and everything. So, uh, let's go straight into it and let's talk about um, the new story. Ooh. Ooh. So, um, <laughs> new story. Um, so, issue thirteen. So, uh, there's been a lot of miscommunication. People, you know, thinking issue thirteen was going to be like purely PvP. Um, it was never meant to be. Like we had uh, our PvP team working on PvP, and we had like more uh, resources from the team to help you out uh, on on this part of the game. Um, but uh, there's also a whole new story. I mean, we're still like a storytelling game. So um, we're adding a new story, which is going to bring you back to Tokyo. Um, gives you. It's not part of the main storyline, it's just a way for us to tell you more information about some of the characters that you already know. Uh, we are actually also introducing a brand new character as part of this issue, so um, quite exciting. Um, I don't want to reveal too much because I'm afraid then it's going to be like full of spoilers and everything, but I do have a few, uh, a few teases. Um, we have so five new missions, um, four of the missions are going to be a, um, a continuity of each other, like a whole story being told. Uh, via several NPCs, uh, you're going to get some hints throughout the streams as to which those NPCs could be. Um, the fifth mission, I'm actually, uh, the hint is going to be so obvious that I might as well just say it out, uh, out loud right away. Uh, you're going to get to um, to meet up with Ricky Pagan again, so you know, I know you guys um, like that character. Um, so you're going to do one more mission for Ricky, and actually as part of the mission you're going to get a chance to earn his bike. Uh, there's an achievement which is a part of the issue so you know uh, it's uh, it's going to be a, a cool bike to get if you uh, if you manage the uh, the achievement. Um, what else? The rest of the story, so the rest of the story is something that I wanted to go back more into kind of the roots of TSW and trying to go back as much as possible to kind of the the, the, the horror of the game like the, the themes that we have. Um, so it's a bit of a, of a dark issue, uh, as usual it's going to lead you through, uh, through many ways before you un understand what happens, but it's definitely one of these stories is who gets darker and darker. Um, I do have actually a little um, um, tease I wanted to show of one of, uh, one of the areas you're going to get to explore. Um, without the context it's maybe not quite as spooky, but in game right now it's actually quite frightening. I'm quite happy with the way this is uh, turning out. And um, this is it, uh, you're going to get to... Um, to enter this area, I don't want to even say what it is. Uh, you can get like indication. You will recognize some of the um, uh, some of the designs, but there's a lot in this uh, in this scene. Um, there's a lot of this darkness. There's a lot of you like forcing you into those dark alleys uh, and playing a lot like with lights, you know, stuff that we like to do. You will notice if you look very carefully. Uh, there are some details in there that you know show there's going to be some um, some scary things happening. Um, 
and that's it for the tease. Um, what else did we have um, on this year? Like, I have one big teaser coming up for this, but I'm not going to be. I'm not going to do it right now. Uh, I actually want to talk first of all about the collector's edition we're doing for this issue. So the collector's edition, and this is why you're going to get so many ideas of. Uh, who you might get to uh, talk to during the issue. Um, we've actually put like a, a few goodies, uh, which I think is going to be easier if I show you. Um, so let's go back into mm-hmm. there, and these are some of the collections that you can get. So you know, I've heard that you guys have been wanting to get Ricky Piggins uh, boombox for a while. So it's actually going to be an item that you can get as part of it, and just you know, get all the all the action going, your music, like the, the the demeanors of Ricky and everything. And then you might recognize those other items uh, in there who are part of the NPCs that you're going to encounter as part of the mission. Um, they're fairly obvious. I'm leaving you a few seconds to figure out who they might be in the chat. Does anybody know who they are? Mm. And mm. off. Of course, you probably recognize these are the brothers and sisters, uh, survivors of Kaden, um, Harumi and Yuichi. Um, they are going to be the guys who are actually going to start you up on your journey in Tokyo. And after that, you're going to meet um, a new character and other characters who are already present in the game. So get, get a better impression of what they are. And then I did have a teaser of the story. So I don't want to talk you too much, but I've recorded like 30 seconds of a um, of the startup cutscene. Uh, it's actually not the beginning of the cutscene, it's just a small interesting section that you're going to have in there, and then we're going to watch it together now. Hope you guys enjoy. Come on, come on, come on! Frag! Frag! Get some! Yeah, get some! Come at me, bro, I'm jacked! Yeah, yeah, you nargle puke dorks! Give me all of your aggro! Pop, 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 pow! I'll put a megaton of hot plasma right up your... Oh, hey! I was just, uh, gaming. You know, gaming. I'm a gamer. It's what I do. She's a hacker, too. Rum's semi-famous in some online circles. Well... I don't want to brag, but... There you go. What did you think? Um, it's a really cool cutscene. It's actually like, it's, uh, it's a lot longer. There's, uh, there's more stuff going on, but I really don't want to spoil the, um, spoil the story. Uh, it will be out very soon, so you guys will get a chance to, uh, to play with this um, as soon as it's out. Um, I hope you enjoy it, and I'm actually going to move on straight to the next points because I think I would be way too tempted to, uh, to tell you more about actually what's going to happen so it's uh, so it would be a shame <laughs> no it's so tempting I'm like oh but I want to say about this and say about that so cool uh, let's move on to the next part so let's go back into um, uh, we were done with uh, the new storyline uh, so now we want to go sorry, into PvP Mm. Oh yeah, so PvP, we have a lot to talk about. Um, And actually I'm gonna let you start with this. He's a lead system designer, he handles all that stuff. Oh yeah. So uh, we're going to add a new minigame as you may know, but in doing that we wanted to go back and look at all our existing minigames, you know, like Eldorado and Stonehenge and see what we could do to kind of bring them up to par and like do some quality of life improvements there. So one of the things that we've done is for both El Dorado and Stonehenge, we've made it so that the start points for each faction are randomized. So, you know, in Stonehenge, it's sometimes better to approach from the Dragon side or the Templar side, some people say maybe, or Illuminati. So now, whenever you start a Stonehenge match, all those locations will be randomized. So you won't get the same exact point every time, so it'll add a little bit more dynamic to Stonehenge. So each time you play it, you'll have... You know, it won't always be that someone has the advantage. It'll yeah. be randomized. Uh, That's same with the advantage. Uh, it's, a, it's a very important uh, yeah. part of PvP, so it's good. Same with El Dorado. So, you know, sometimes it is easier for one faction to grab a relic right at the start. So that person who gets that advantage might be you or someone else the next time. So it'll, it'll keep things fresh each time that you go into it. Uh, in addition to that, and what we wanted to add is there's... 
And so people who want to don't know exactly what role they should be when they join a PvP match. So, you know, you might start out as a healer role, but you might decide that you need more DPS or you need more tanks. So now we've added uh, the ability for you to swap which suit you're in and what role you are in the, in the spawn points of all the PvP areas so that you can pick what best suits the situation and your team's needs at that any given time. Yeah. That's going to oh, be a big edit, I think. So whenever you die, you get a chance to change your role, or even you don't even have to wait. You can actually. Oh, can you can you run back? Uh, I think so. Maybe not. There's a yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah. It's going to be very like it's you know a lot of other games uh, offer these kind of options as well. So it kind of makes sense. You know, we jump on the bandwagon on this one, uh, <laughs> and uh, it's going to really help you out. Mostly being being able to uh, to be more dynamic based on the the rest of your group. So yeah, and the enemy it's composition as well to match up to them and be as competitive as you can be. Mm -hmm. um, on Eldorado also specifically, we've been reviewing basically what the relics do and like how they can force kind of turtle scenarios where you know one team gets all the relics and puts them all in one big point and they get all the buffs and it makes them better at keeping those relics. What we want to do is kind of reverse that and make it so that the person, the team that is winning has a harder time keeping it so that it kind of creates shift in the, in the flow of the game. So, you know, if you have all the relics, you're more vulnerable rather than less vulnerable. So what we've done is whenever you have a relic planted on the ground, one by itself, nothing bad will happen. Like you won't get any bonus like you did before. It'll just be there on the ground. The moment that you're within the radius of two relics, like if the overlap circles of both of them, you'll get one stack of a debuff, which will decrease your health, the amount of damage you deal, the amount of healing you can do, and increase the amount of damage you take. And that'll stack up for every other relic that is in an overlapping spot. So it might be that you want to keep those separate so you don't get those debuffs, but it also presents a different tactical situation where you have to defend more area and keep people from stealing more relics. So it's not just all in one centralized point. It, to make it so that, you know, a team that has a lot of relics has a harder time keeping them to make the game easier for, you know, underdogs to come back and yeah, maybe pull out. It's going to make defending more challenging from now on, which is I think one of the biggest issues we've had with this game. It's some of the intention we had originally actually like to go back into a little bit of a TSW history. Um, this was even actually almost, uh, okay. this was before my time and all of this, but the, the reasoning behind um, giving people, um, buffing the defenders um, was because people were under the impression that the more relics you would have is really the other two factions would really try to team up and go against you. Yeah. Um, but in reality, this doesn't, happen that often it tends the other faction tend to uh, you know still fight each other off um as they would i mean you know uh You've seen enemy you want to shoot them yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> so it's kind of a it, it makes it so much easier for the defender they have a very big advantage and then so we looked at it and we decided to to make this kind of a drastic change to it but i think it's gonna it's gonna help out uh, this game being a bit more fair for for everyone and then uh, it's gonna it's going to force you guys to change your tactics, you know, the way you go in there, you're only able to stack everything, you can just do, there's, there's plenty of ways to, to handle this, so we'll let you guys figure it out. And in addition, since now, since, you know, the, the areas don't apply, you know, while you're holding the relic, so we also added a detriment to holding the relic, so the longer that you hold the relic, the more damage you're going to take, so there's a more dangerous proposition with, like, transporting and moving them around, but it's not as dangerous trying to steal one. So, you know, you won't have as many stacks when you first pick one up. So you can, you know, steal one and run away and then go plant it where you want to. But then if you're trying to just hold on to them to avoid those big aura of debuff, you're going to eventually drop them and lose them. That's cool. Sweet. Um, well, let's move on. So that was everything. So this is everything which is happening to the, uh, so very soon to the, to the current mini games. Uh, as you know, we teased it last time, we're also working on a uh, new location, new minigame type, and now it's time to reveal okay. everything about this. <laughs> so, let's see, there's a... Um, what did we have? We have, this is the image that we revealed last time. Uh, so, let me show you another concept that we have going a little bit more into, uh, into this location. So I think now it's, uh, you know, it's, you guys know, obviously the location, we mentioned it before, um, Shambhala finally um, is coming to TSW. Oh. Hooray! Woo. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so we have a few, so we're still working on the play field um, right now. Um, I have some screenshot of it, work in progress, which I'm going to show you. 
So bear with us that the playfield will be a lot cooler than this when it's actually finished. Yeah. Uh, this is really, really work in progress. But you will recognize this location. You will see very big red, uh, bright red marks on the ground. Uh, I'm going to explain in a second as to why we have these red marks, and you'll see like it's going to give you a bit more of the insight of the uh, of the designing um, behind the scenes with some of the angles. So you can see it's going to be uh, very cold uh, in there. It's uh, very very cold. Very very cold. Um, it's going to be similar like you in one of the um, uh, rogue agent um, faction mission you actually get to go to uh, part of Shambhala. The play field itself is different. It's a, it's the same. Um, environment obviously but it's a, it's a different location in the playfield so you'll notice it looks quite different um, and let's see now actually this is uh, this is going to help you guys start planning out your PvP games because this is the overview map of the playfield so this is seen from the, the top this is what the playfield uh, is gonna, going to look like um, those red marks you see on the ground which I mentioned earlier are actually uh, marks that our world designers are using to um, to see things that need to be updated uh, based on, uh, on on design needs. So when we looked at it, we're like, okay, we need was uh, um, we need those areas to be larger so people can you know line of sight behind it can can use them. So um, the artist who's looking for the props is using those areas to try and uh, and match a bit more the needs of the of gameplay. Um, and then obviously we're going to remove those big red marks, make it very snowy, very cool, and uh, <laughs> it's going to be a great game. And actually, Andrew is going to tell you a bit more about the actual way the game is going to work. So yeah, we're adding a completely new uh, game mode. Actually, um, this Shambhala will be a scenario, actually, kind of. So you know, it'll be available from the Council of Venice uh, scenario signup, but also from the PvP menu. And the uh, the main focus of the game is a last man standing. So it's, you know, it's 10 versus 10 we want to start with to test out and you know, test the waters and see if that's the, the right team sizes. But um, it'll be a last man standing, so it'll be one team versus another. Faction won't matter. You'll be on whatever side. It'll be like a simulation of testing your combat prowess in the, the scenario simulator. So you'll be assigned one person to each side if you saw the two towers on the other side. Then you'll meet in the middle and fight, um, and, and the team. Even, even your teammates, yeah, might be any fight. Yeah, you might you might be an Illuminati fighting against other Illuminati or dragon fighting against other dragon. It's it'll just be a mixed bag. So it's it'll give us a couple things. It'll allow you to fight your friends outside of the fight club, and it also will allow the queues to happen faster because you're not you know waiting for the last dragon to sign up or waiting for the last Templar to sign up. Um, you're just ready to go as soon as uh, 20 people are ready to, to fight. Um, there's a couple other unique things we're doing in this minigame. We're adding uh, some hazard areas. So to tell us actually we can. I'm going to put the map back up. Okay, great. And then you can, uh, you can explain based on the map. So where, where do the team start? Right, so you start on the, the towers on either side, uh, team A and team B on the left and right. And as you move inwards towards the center to meet each other and fight, the outer areas of the arena will shrink. Like it'll, it'll be a snowstorm will be happening, and may, if you stand in the cold for too long, you'll end up dying and not really helping your team. Um, since as soon as you die, I don't know if I mentioned this, but it's the last. Since it's last man standing, as soon as you die, you're you're out. Like you you can revive and spectate the rest of the match if you want, or you can go on and do something else. So like go into Fusang or queue up for another mini game. Yeah, you can queue for another mini game. Um, but you know, as the fight progresses in Shambhala, the area that you have to fight in gets smaller and smaller up until the point where you're, there's no line of sight blockers and you're just uh, the eye of the storm right in the middle <laughs> with just you and whoever's left. So there's no hiding for too long. You will be forced to, uh, forced to fight. Um, so like really the point of these games is trying to keep them like fast. We want this to, uh, you know, you'll yeah, be able yeah. to, to chain them as, as long as you want, but we you know, we're gonna last probably like maximum like five minutes. Yeah, or something. the time limit on the match is time is five minutes, yeah. and the, it shrinks within the first minutes or so of so the match. So kill, kill, kill. So you're telling us yeah. about the hazards? I interrupted you. Oh yeah, so that yeah, the hazard is shrinking the area, but there's also another environmental hazard that you have to be aware of. Is you can see there's kind of like wind blowing off onto the edge, and eventually the the wind will build up and a huge gust will strike the area. If you're not hiding behind something, it'll push you towards the edge of the cliff and well if you fall off you're you're out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this cliff so. that you see is a very very important part of the um, 
of the dungeon. You can use it to advantage by you know knocking your friends off the cliff and then uh, and then yeah, winning this way. <laughs> but it's also going to be like everyone everyone's going to have to be aware of that win coming, and then you're going to want to hide. And potentially, when you're going to hide, you might you know meet up either friends or foes. You know, hiding behind the same statues. It's gonna be up to you to either kick them out of there or you know be friendly while the the wind passes by. <laughs> and then, uh, so yeah, I think that'll be pretty cool. It's actually pretty fun already. Um. Yeah, and also there's that one extra thing in there. Since it's a scenario, there will also be power ups. If you can see those little tiny black dots there, those are some uh, test areas we have for spawning some of the power ups. You know. It'll be small ones that, you know, just give you a movement buff or a tactical advantage, like being able to reposition yourself. And then the more dangerous areas, like the one right in the center, could be a bigger buff, like, you know, clears the cooldowns on all your teammates or, like, gives you and your team a big damage buff. It'll be something that you really want to fight over, so controlling the center for that power-up is kind of important. But it's also something you want to balance against being exposed and out in the open. Because you're right in the open, yeah. So it's uh, kind of scary. Nice, nice. Um, I'm pretty pumped about this myself, actually. Yeah. I've been like dying to like talk to folks about like you know the, the, the two faction kind of like yeah. death match kind of thing. I think yeah. that's something that like we really need here. So I think it's like, gonna help. Yeah, yeah, going away right from the from the from the three man faction. Like you know, going we really like yeah, last man standing. Like yeah, yeah. it's just it's just about your personal skills. Um, yeah. The Cash scenario is really is, you know is is really helping with this. Like you know that's the main reason. So it's not quite part of the. Of um, of the main PvP law as to why you're fighting in there. This is just a training session organized still by the Council of Venice um, into getting in there, just to get fighting, to getting used to fighting other other bees. So that should be pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we actually also have a whole bunch of unique rewards that are going to come with this. Yes, uh, exclusive to Shambhala. Yeah. So we actually have a few. Uh, there's a lot of them uh, coming. We have tons of new gadgets, tons of new signets. Uh, he has some examples of some of the um, some of the gadgets to start with. So uh, here's one: the effectiveness of heal, barrier, and leech effects on the enemy target are reduced by forty percent, and it can't be cleansed. So it's a short range, low cooldown uh, heal debuff. This will also stack with corrupted. So if you really need to focus a person down, you want to use this on them. Maybe, but you know, since it's a curiosity, it's going to share the cooldown with all your other PvP gadgets and your karma curio and stuff. So it's making this a decision whether you want you want to focus someone down or heal yourself. Um, the other one is a group support oriented one, something good for like tanks with a lot of health that would want to use this. It will give 10, en 10 friends within 10 meters of you a damage absorb that's pretty significant. It's based on your max health, I think it's about 20% of your max health. So the more health you have, the more health that you can give your friends so you can like make a focus and organized push like in Shambhala to like, you know, give everyone a shield and then go and attack so that you, it's harder for them to kill you and then you can get the advantage there. Cool. Uh, I guess we also have some signets here to show off. So the first one on the left here is a, a one for PvP tanks, who you know, like the, the glance tanks or evade tanks or block. So whenever you do one of those things, you're going to get a boost to your critical chance and penetration chance for a short time. So you put that on if you want to, you know, focus on, you know, taking hits, but also being able to dish out some damage back. Um, the middle one is also kind of cool. It's good for those uh, big cooldown builds. So whenever you actually get the killing blow, not just anyone on your team, you specifically have to get the last and final hit. All your cooldowns are reduced by 75%. So, you know, if you pop deadly aim and breaching shot and then just try to really kill someone, you'll get some that most of that back and be able to do it again soon if you get that final hit. And the last one is uh, something good for healers. And whenever you... Oh, the tooltip's a little wrong, but the health is below 50%, not 5. I mean, it would be hard to heal someone whose health is below 5. <laughs> I'll be fixing that. Injury, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll get a pretty substantial heal. Um, the amount increases the closer they are to death, so if they're at 1%, it'll be closer to the 2400 value. And uh, so you can keep, you know, all your friends away from death's door and keep them up and in, in the fight against all this extra damage that's coming out now. <laughs> nice. So mm. there actually are. So you know, this is just a small example of uh, all of the new rewards you're gonna get. Uh, how many signets do we have? Uh, there are 33 new signets and wow. about nine or ten new gadgets. So uh, some 
some variations there and some different options for you to play with and change the way that you look at PvP. And they're not only PvP related, like some of them like you can use outside of PvP. Obviously the one where you kill a player, you have to kill a player, so that one won't be useful. But the one where you're the healer one where you're healing people more when they're at lower health will still function normally outside of PvP. Yeah, cool. So there'll be interest for PvEers to come in and play Shambhala with you and, you know, you can kill them because they're PvEers. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> cool uh, one question that was brought up in chat is, uh, will there be any differences in how equal foot, uh, footing is used or like is applied in Shambhala, or Shambhala? Oh, actually, that's something different that we did in Shambhala. Okay. Um, since there's no sides, you won't be using your faction uniform. You'll still have equal footing and the uniform bonuses, but you'll be able to dress the way you want and show off your outfit in PvP in Shambhala. Yeah. It'll just be whatever you're wearing. There'll be... Something else added to you, we haven't fully decided on what that'll be, but it'll be some sort of way to distinguish enemy and friend. So, uh, but otherwise you'll be wearing your whatever you want into PvP. Yeah. Pants, no pants, whatever you like. <laughs> pants are all as options. Oh, pants yeah. are the best. <laughs> um, awesome, great. All right, well, let's move on. Uh, so that was it for the, the, the PvP. Oh, actually, PvP updates. There is a couple of more mm -hmm. stuff happening. So this was... Um, so this is kind of an ongoing plan, you know, with the, uh, uh, the updates to Eldorado and Stonehenge are going to be coming out pretty soon. Um, uh, Shambhala, we're still working on. Uh, we have it planned for soon, but not quite as yeah. soon as the rest. Uh, we're still finishing it up. Like, it's, uh, the scripts, everything's are working. Uh, there's still some updates you have you seen to be done to the, to the world design. And then uh, testing on our on our end, um, we'll be testing yeah. on test live as well. The queuing um, and stuff needs some. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a couple other things that are in the process in the pipeline. We're coming out, but we'll get them and hooked up as soon as we can and get it out to some mm -hmm. play testing on test live as soon as we can. Yeah, we have actually the the test live. The uh, the items will be uh, will be coming out pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, I, in Agartha on test live next to fate where you see the Aegis vendor there will be a signet vendor who has all rarities the green blue purple versions of all the signets that are coming out available for one packs each it's a test live only deal wow <laughs> <laughs> better get there before we're all gone so we'd really love to have your feedback on that at, both on balance and uh, you know if it's worth it to go from green to purple and you know if the signet's too powerful too strong too weak Anything that you want us to tell us about it, we'd love to hear what you want, what your feedback is. Yeah, and it'll be coming out like early next week. Uh, no question which day yet, we just need to figure it out. But then, yeah, as soon as it's there, just please let us know, and we're always, always listening. Yes. Um, we also have other plans. Uh, we know, like, um, Fusang, the, uh, the, the, the current state, uh, is not really working as intended. Uh, we have some plans for. Um, for it, um, but that's going to be like we, we're finishing Shambhala first, and then we're gonna we're gonna look at the rest. We have so many ideas, so little time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But Fusang Fight Clubs, uh, we have some uh, some plans as well for them to update them to try and really focus on the uh, on this kind of making PvP like just as lively as it is. Like we know there's a, a recrudescence of people playing PvP thanks to the challenges, so we're trying to make sure you know we everybody's having fun and everybody's fine. Like some kind of a play style uh, that's going to be good for them. Yeah. Um, Sweet deal. That said, let's go back into a different type of gameplay mm -hmm. in CSW, oh, and we're gonna on, have a look. Real quick, also. So, uh, if we finished up with the PvP bit, want to run a little? Yes. So we are, you know, uh, prizes. Keep, yeah, in keeping yeah. with tradition with our usual dev streams, we are going to be doing some giveaways. Uh, the first bit that we're going to be giving away uh, is going to be 600 bonus points. I'm going to be starting a raffle soon. There will be a special prize at the end of the stream that we'll run a raffle for as well, so stay tuned to find out what that might be. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I know. Ooh, sparkly. Ooh. I know, I know, I know. Mysteries. Alright. Raffle has started. Ooh. Alright. That's when you type waffle into the chat, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> waffle, is the, waffle is the only way. Um, cool. Well, we... I'm just going to show you the the title for the next thing we're going to talk about until we find a winner. And so the next thing is something that we've been talking about for quite some time now is the group finder. Ooh. Yay. Um, the group finder has been a hell of a headache. We'll be honest <laughs> with you. Um, we wanted to work properly. Like, you know, it's uh, it's... 
it's uh, the design was fairly ambitious uh, into everything we're trying to do, and we're trying to achieve everything we have we wanted to. Um, that group finder actually uh, was on test live and is still on test live. If you guys want to try it out in its current state and everything, please uh, do so and let us know what you think. Um, we had a, a run like a couple of weeks ago where devs and players were oh, playing yeah. around. Thank you very much if you got participated. It really, really helped us out. Um, you know, it, it, we uncovered uh, one pretty big issue that was fixed uh, <laughs> right away, uh, which was awesome. Uh, now it seems to be like pretty solid, um, but still, we want to make sure. So we're going to keep it on test life for a while. Um, and if you haven't gotten a chance to play with it, so I'm going to show you how it works. But first, let's find out if we have a winner. We do. All right. All right. So our winner is uh, Coffee Nebula. Congratulations. Hey, You're going to get 600 Nebula. bonus points sent to you. Um, I'm going to send you a private message, and then we'll make sure to get that delivered to you as soon as possible. Thanks, Ben. Congrats. Congrats. Woohoo! Great. All right. Well, let's go back to the group finder now. Uh, and I have some images to show you. So this is what the dungeon finder looks like. Uh, you'll be able to access it in game, uh, and you'll have access to two things right now. You'll be able you'll be able to see a list um, of the dungeons that are currently available to your character, uh, as well as the randomizer. And I'll go through those two things to explain what they are. Um, so. One is fairly straightforward, if I can click it, uh, it's going to be the list of the dungeon you have available, so you can just select the difficulty that you want, then you can select whichever dungeon you might want to be able to queue for, and then you can just sign up, and it will, you'll have to s specify one of, the, one of the roles you would like to play in there, so it's still we're using what we call the Holy Trinity of tanks, DPS, and healers, you'll need to specify you know, what you mind, uh, what you don't mind playing as, um, and then you can sign up for this dungeon. Um, or uh, you can actually, if you rather let the game decide for you, you can use the randomizer system. The randomizer system is going to have so four groups of, uh, of dungeons, either the Nightmare Dungeons or the Nightmare Dungeon with Aegis activated, which is of course the, the manufactory, um, both, uh, both manufactories, and it also includes um, penthouse. the penthouse. Uh, and then you have your Elite Dungeon and the Elite Dungeon Aegis activated, same as earlier. If you decide to go with a randomizer, so letting the game decide for you, uh, you will see a unique randomizer bonus reward that you get. Uh, one of them is shown right now where you're going to get extra marks of the Pantheon, extra bullions, packs, uh, Aegis uh, XP. As well as once a day, if you do the Aegis one, you're going to get a special uh, Aegis reward bag, uh, allowing you to upgrade your Aegis faster. Um, and yeah, so this is, as long as you complete that dungeon, this is going to be available to you. Great. Um, moving on, I wanted to show you, so this is what happens. So after, you, after you've queued uh, for your dungeon, you specify what you wanted to do, you've selected your roles, uh, you will notice in the upper left corner of your screen, like a kind of a, a queue status, so just you know, reminding you that you're currently queued. It's the same as if you're queued for PvP, if you're already used to this kind of a visual feedback. Um, and once your group is actually ready, uh, it will just pop up and it will tell you the um, uh, the role which has been assigned to you. So you might specify, you might say, I don't mind doing anything. You know, I, I can tank, I tank DPS, I can, I can heal. It will tell you, okay, well, for this particular group, you've been assigned the role of a tank. You can accept, it will show you how many people are ready to, uh, to go in with you. And once you get teleported, you'll enter the dungeon. Uh, if you notice on the right hand side of the uh, group window, you will notice the roles that everybody has been automatically assigned. So it's going to you know, prevent people from saying, oh, you know, I, I was told I was, uh, I, was, I was a DPS. People are able to say, well, you actually are the healer, you know, so Takomansa, which is actually Andrew, has uh, <laughs> stopped telling us we're DPS. So the group, um, the, the whole group finder relies on, those, on this idea of the Holy Trinity, but it's not ultimately necessary. Like the group finder will actually allow you to go with a full group if you want to. Uh, as you go with a full group, you know, just for uh, the sake of, of making the queues, you will still need to specify uh, roles which are whatever you want. But once you're in the dungeon, nothing prevents you from saying, you know, we're going to do this with, a, um, with one tank healer and then, you know, four DPS or we're just going to five DPS the, uh, uh, the manufacturer if we want to. I'd love to see that actually, if you guys want to do this without <laughs> any tank healer, that would be amazing. Um, so yeah, that's um, 
that's the dungeon finder. We've added extra stuff to, to the functionality in there as well to make sure everything works properly. So one of the things that we've added is once you're inside the dungeon for dungeon made uh, with the dungeon finder, you'll be able to kick players out. So if you end up with a player who uh, goes AFK, doesn't want to doesn't wanna help out, um, you'll be able to vote to kick them is something that's going to be useful in PvP as well. Um, so you know, it's, it's a way to, to protect the players. Um, uh, from trolls as they exist <laughs> uh, and in PvP we, like we know there's been some issue people like going AFK and everything so now you're going to be able to uh, to get rid of those uh, leeches uh, if you end up being grouped with them <laughs> um, but there are some protection on the other end as well um, you won't be able to be kicked from a group uh, during a boss fight you won't be able to be kicked if you're still rolling on um, on the on the loot from the boss, all these kind of things. So there's no abuse uh, on the other side as well. Um, what else did we add? We also added like a, one um, one cool little thing is um, I really wanted to try and make sure people use uh, this system um, in a friendly manner, really encouraging people to play with each other. So if you end up in a group where someone has never played a dungeon before, never played that particular dungeon. There's going to be a message telling you like there's a, a rookie agent amongst amongst you, um, and it's going to help you guys into knowing one person might not necessarily know what to do with the bosses, so you can just spend a little bit of time saying, okay, you know this is uh, the final boss of Hell, Hell Eternal, so you know make sure you know like all these mechanics. Um, but the cool thing about this is like this guy is actually gonna um, is going to grant a first time reward bonus to everybody in the group so not just that person everybody yeah. will benefit from it and it's it's a good reward so make sure you run that person so through make sure you finish it and then everybody else going to get uh, that extra bonus just uh, just for helping them out helping out the new guys yeah <laughs> yay nice um what else? Um, group finders. So as we have all these kind of things, we're also going to update the, the challenges. Uh, some challenges are going um, are going to require you, are going to allow you to, uh, to use the dungeon finder to, uh, to get extra mobs. So it's going to make it even easier now to make sure uh, you cap out on those mobs if you want to by just you know, doing those, those extra challenges. Uh, we also modified um, one uh, for you uh, hardcore players. Uh, we've modified the nightmare dungeon um, challenge now will require you to do all of the all of the dungeon the ones. weekly one yeah yeah the weekly one so it's going to be more difficult but we've increased the reward um, <laughs> just giving you the smile it's like we are going to increase the reward now. yeah of course uh, <laughs> sure yes <laughs> and we we did separate them in two, if I remember correctly. You have one who is to do so. all the non Aegis dungeon and one to do just the Aegis yeah, dungeon. Yeah, so you don't so have to go through manufacturing to, uh, to get your, your weekly nightmare, just like you didn't have to do manufacturing to get your weekly nightmare before we do this change. Yeah. So we wanted to keep that consistent for players who are you know, maybe still in the noob mares phase of their, their nightmare dungeon running career. But making sure people do all the dungeons and everything, so that yeah. that should really help out in that. Uh, and it's it's only for you nightmare people in that year. You know you can take the challenge, and you can't just do Polaris over and over again and <laughs> cheese your way out of a uh, of this difficult challenge. Yeah. Polaris is just such a great dungeon. That's why. They yeah, do it, right? yeah, I love it. <laughs> it's a good dungeon, actually. Yeah, it really like is, it. but it's it's it is the easiest. So smash on the about. helicopter. Yeah, we're also looking into actually uh, evening out the the difficulty of some of those some of those dungeons. Um, part of the all the things that we we're looking at doing right now, so that there's not such dramatic dramatic difference between the early nightmare and the and the late nightmare outside of the Aegis activated ones. Yeah, those um, are the tough ones. <laughs> they are. Yeah. Um, we also have we're also gonna have a new range of achievements uh, with pretty cool unique rewards um, so just for if you keep using the the randomizers for example you're gonna get um, credits for using it every single time and eventually you're gonna get some uh, some pretty cool uh, pretty cool rewards from uh, from achievements so uh, I hope you guys enjoy it and I hope you guys use it when it's ready <laughs> and it's gonna be very soon yeah it's um, we're really looking at uh, not for the end of this year, but uh, early next year, uh, we'll be uh, we'll be releasing it. And it's again, if you want to try it out, please uh, go on the, on the test servers and then and then let us know what you think. And if you find any any problem with it, it's gonna help us be confident that it's ready to be uh, ready <laughs> yes. to be launched. So one good question came up in chat. And it looks like we already got answered, but just to you know, just to be able to say it mm -hmm. on camera, also, 
uh, can you join or can you queue up with the group finder if you're already in a group? Like, let's say you're in a two-man, for mm -hmm. example. Will your group be yep. added to the group yep. finder? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Just combine into five. That's cool. It doesn't matter the the size of the group. You can you can go on your own. You can go as a group. You can go as a full group or as half a group. Uh, it will just pull other people from the queues and then help you Find finishing your missing your holes. Yeah. <laughs> the other cool thing as well is um, if you are inside the dungeon and one person leaves, you'll be able to re-enter the dungeon finder to get. Um, a new person to uh, to join you. It's actually going to happen automatically, but it will it will help you fill in with was role and make sure you can finish your dungeon. Uh, yeah, Sweet. that's everything of the dungeon finder. So let's move on to the next section, which is going to be the very seasonal stuff. Ooh, Christmas! We're talking about Christmas. God, this is really really dark. Uh, <laughs> on this screen, I can barely see. All I see is a, a black blurb, uh, which is uh, happening in there. So Christmas this year, um, so hopefully you guys will be busy playing the new issue 13 mission by the time this comes out at the same time. So there's not going to be a new um, Christmas mission itself, but we're going to reactivate all of the events from previous year. So we're going to reactivate the Apocalypse from 2012. Uh, we're going to uh, reactivate all of uh, Krampus uh, and all of Krampus's nonsense and, and tricks that he's doing on people. Um, which is like right in time for that movie is coming out and I don't know about you guys but I'm very excited about it <laughs> um, and we're also going to reactivate the magic flute from uh, from last year um, as you know uh, what we've done now like you know the, the new theme of the game so we're going to have a seasonal bag as well seasonal Christmas bag coming out so you're going to be able to earn uh, by doing some of the missions or get straight from the item stalls um, We've looked at, uh, at your feedback from Halloween and we've decided to add uh, lucky coins to, uh, to the seasonal bags as well. Um, so you're going to be able to just, uh, you'll be able to get lucky coins from the, from the bags you get from the item store. Uh, the ones from the missions are not going to give you that, but you'll be able to get those back for free. Uh, so that's really pretty good, right? Um, but you're gonna get this new. Uh, you're gonna get this new. This new bag. I actually have some cool stuff I wanted to show you about the kind of things you're gonna get in the bag. So let me see. Uh, there's so many screenshots in there. I'm surprised I haven't uh, screwed up yet. But it's uh, <laughs> it's bound to happen. So stay tuned. So there you go. Um, new mounts for this. So a cool uh, snowboard hoverboard. Um, it's seasonal, so of course, you know, this is uh, this had to be the uh, the special month we get as part of it. We also have one really cool outfit uh, that was made, and here it is. Whoop! There you go. So this is going to be like the the main outfit for the season. So again, very uh, um, very seasonal, uh, very wintry, and you know, you get antlers because why not? Yeah, everyone loves antlers. And it's, uh, yeah, this one is actually already uh, already finished. We have tons of things right now we're still working on, so I, I don't want to show you things too much in progress. Uh, but this outfit is actually uh, already done. This is um, this is what it looks like in game right now. It actually comes up in other in other colors as well. Um, but it's a version of it, and you can see one of the pets you'll be able to get. So hell is going to be uh, um, is going to be a pet available this season. And if you're gonna get hell, of course, you need to also get Krampus. This is the and this is the male version of the outfit in a different color, in black. Cool. <laughs> nice. I love these small boss monsters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah no. Yeah. They're, su they're super cute. So we like you know little by little all of the monsters we have in the game are, are turning into pets. But they uh, uh, those guys are gonna be pretty neat. And then so you're gonna get the lucky coins. Um, and you, so it should, it should give you a way to fight off this RNG and make it easier for you guys to actually be, uh, get the items that you really want uh, as part of this. So it's, um, I hope you guys enjoy this. And what we're talking about, so holiday seasons and in particular Christmas, of course, uh, I just want to reiterate that gifting is coming. So gifting is going to come at the same time as uh, all of this. And... Um, if you looked at the last stream, you probably have seen those, those pages again. Just wanted to uh, show you again how it's going to work. So now from the store, you'll be able to click on the gift option, which is uh, in the main bar. And once you get to this gift option, you're going to be able to select a friend. Uh, once you selected that friend, you will see all of the um, uh, all of the content which is available to them. And you're going to be able to just select those items, 
buy the gift to them and they'll receive it. Uh, and there's going to be fireworks and everything when you receive a gift. So it's going to be a, a, ver a very cool way to celebrate um, this season. So I hope you guys enjoy this and I hope you guys get generous to each other. It'll be awesome. And that's it for the seasonal um, season. Oh no, there is one little cool thing I wanted to say. So um, there's other stuff that we're adding to the, to the store. Uh, we haven't gotten a chance to do many new sprints yet. So we've done like a new vehicles all the times. But um, as I told you, like, you know, the uh, we've released the athlete and released some of the other sprints who have uh, trails behind you. So we're going to we're going to add a bunch of these again. And then we're also going to add one new animation um, to the existing sprints. The athlete is going to get updated. The, the current one, you're going to get a new jump that is going to go with it. It's going to make it yeah. more kind of a athlete looking uh, and the other one that you have is actually if you look at the uh, the original icon it looked more like a different type of run so we went with that and it was like hey we already have the icon so now all we need is the animation that's a cheap way of doing things that's okay. how we do things that's right. so you're gonna get this new sprint and I wanted to show you I have a little video in there what it's gonna look like here <laughs> it is <laughs> And you'll notice uh, those tumbles when you go uh, when you go through it. That ninja run, it's it's really cool. The tumbles yeah. are really neat, and you always get a chance when you land on the ground to follow up with a tumble. It's what you saw at the end of this video where you can do two, and it looks so cool and it happens. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope to see all of you like running like ninjas. Um, <laughs> if you get the Shinobu outfit as well, in particular, it looks so cool. Chad is going nuts right <laughs> now. Uh, good. Oh, this is awesome. And we have uh, <laughs> this plenty more that comes from. We have tons of ideas like um, of other stuff that we can do. So yeah, but this one had to be the had to be the next. So cool. <laughs> awesome. All right, moving on. So quick things before we move on. Uh, two quick questions that came up in chat. Um, uh, are we are we able to comment on uh, the type of currency that can be used for the gift store? Bonus points versus Funcom points. Um. Yeah, I mean, currently the store only allows uh, to use Funcom points. Um, that was part of the decision. That was some of the issues that we had earlier with the um, with the bonus points, and that was partly why gifting uh, couldn't be done. Um, so it's it's been made as a, as a decision that when gifting would come in, like only Funcom point would be um, available. Um, and it's it's mostly to prevent some kind of abuse that we have on our end of uh, of points to get awarded. Like bonus points, there's many ways to award them that um, doesn't help us. We wanted to avoid people like being able to get all this stuff gifted through others. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a that was kind of the, the the market marketing reason behind it. But it kind of a it kind of makes sense. And you know, I to me personally at the end I felt like you know rather than having no gifting at all if this has to be one of the uh, one of the limitation uh, we might as well but as you saw like it's it's very clear on the uh, on the tutorial this is why we made this tutorial all these images that you saw they will appear the first time that you gift and it's very clear that it's only uh, only fun components will be uh, will be available as part of this uh, currency yeah it makes sense and people seem to be pretty understandable yeah. like understanding yeah. that system cool. so that's totally cool thanks for clarifying Thank you. I appreciate it and then one last also question about Shambhala. Um, yes. Can you comment on how queuing will work? Um, if that's not that's not. Uh, hey, you can queue from a specific. Like will, like, will it be solo queue or will there be pre-made? Oh, you can only queue by yourself. That's yeah. actually another thing that we did that we should have mentioned. Yeah, that's that, a very good point. Yeah, um, you can only queue solo. You can queue while you're in a group, but as soon as you accept the queue, you'll be put into a different group. So even if you everyone in your group queues, you might not even end up in the same game or on the same team. Yeah. It is something that we talked about for a while. Like we wanted to make it this way, so it's fair for everybody. We don't want to have you know the problem of being uh, teamed up against uh, pre-made and having another team getting slaughtered because all of this always end up with having the games becoming less and less popular. So uh, we're going to see how it works this way by having everybody playing um, on their own for now. So last man standing against, uh, trying to win for your team, but it's still all about you being able to survive and kill others. Um, and then if it works out, you know, if we if this becomes popular and everything, we'll look into a way of making uh, airline pre-made versus pre-made, you know, not really yeah. a, like a separated type of a, yeah. yeah. 
I mean, and we also, when we were looking at it, we also had Stonehenge and uh, El Dorado, which do support pre-made. So, you know, we wanted to see, you know, if we could make a distinction in this new one to, you know, just have all pugs going through. Yeah. And it's going to help out as well with those queues going faster, as we talked about. Like, we really want to make sure that it yeah. becomes something that you guys can all do quickly when it happens. And then, yeah. Click it will the depend on the queue and you get in immediately. Uh, if it's popular and everything, well, we always adjust. We have plenty of plans. We have plenty of ways, you know, that we uh, that we see if that happens. If this is popular, we'll do this. If that is not, if that doesn't work, we'll do that instead. So we always try to please you guys in some <laughs> way. Thanks so much for answering. Yeah, I appreciate it. That's awesome. Great. It's not always easy to please you guys. <laughs> we do what we, we can. Try. We try. We do what we can. <laughs> and we, we yeah. you know, we thank you for it. Um, all right, well, let's move on. Great. We are about to reach the final category of um, of this, which is what is going to happen next year. So we mentioned, um, I'm going to give you a bit more dates, um, as I've hinted out already through this. So uh, issue 13 itself, the new mission, uh, we're actually looking at having this coming out before Christmas. Um, the Christmas event, the bags, uh, and the stories will come out roughly at the same time. Um, the updates to PvP, uh, to Stonehenge, to Eldorado will come out uh, first, uh, and then early next year we're gonna start. Uh, we're gonna get the Dungeon Finder. We're gonna get Shambhala coming out, um, and we're also going to get uh, a new mount type, uh, which I might as well show you right now. Ooh, booyah! It's beautiful. It's uh, it's very shiny. It's very pretty, and it <laughs> comes in many colors. Um, it's uh, so we have this kind of a Euro European style scooters, so that I don't necessarily uh, uh, quote out the brand, um, but they're very, uh, they're very cool. Um, they feel very different than the bikes. Like you, you sit on them differently. Um, so these are going to be coming out soon. Um, the mount after this one is going to be. Very very different, <laughs> uh, but so this one is gonna it's gonna come out soon. It's gonna be come out uh, early next year, and it's uh, it's pretty neat. Um, what else do we have? We're gonna start next year, so we're gonna start working on issue fourteen right away. Um, I don't wanna go into too many details about issue fourteen, uh, but I can give you uh, a little bit of the ideas that we have right now. Um, so what we wanna do? So issue fourteen uh, is not gonna be in, uh, not gonna be ta taking place in Kaden. Um, we're actually going to take a little breaks now that we've done with our season one of, of TSW. Um, I wanted to get a chance to revisit some of the old location and some of the stories that we haven't necessarily fully fleshed out. Um, so we're going to go back into some of these older locations, um, going back with some of the, maybe some new NPCs, but some NPCs that we already know as well, very similar to what I've done with issue 14, uh, issue 13, excuse me. Um, and then the next issue again is I really really want to go back and really try to reabsorb that kind of a horror setting of the game so going back into it was more freaky area, um, new puzzles, um, thing like this, oh I forgot to mention you get a new investigation as part of uh, issue 13 so mm -hmm. it's kind of a, um, it's not going to be a super difficult one because I, will, I don't want people to get completely stuck before we can compl uh, finish the mission <laughs> but you're definitely going to have to get to use your brain again. Um, but it's the kind of thing I want to do more with some, uh, some of the issues. So um, we're going to do something a bit more similar to what we've done with, uh, so with the, the Tyler Freeboard mission, with uh, issue 6 and issue 7 of having kind of more contained stories within locations uh, and really focusing on that gameplay, focusing on that story. Um, and so, yeah, uh, instead of going with, you know, as you know, like we, each of them has a theme. So we've had, um, we've had Indiana Jones, we had um, James Bond. Uh, we've had pure horror with Tyler Freeborn and this one I'm going to go back with this idea of pure horror of doing something in a, in a cool location uh, but yeah, bit of it to tease anything about this so we'll, uh, we'll get to this pretty soon and uh, yeah I think that's about wraps it up for everything I wanted to say I think I'm going to leave you the mic now Andy we have cool. some community updates yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, little community quarter updates and stuff like that so first of all um uh, I put out a little thing on the forums called Fan Art Fridays. I'm uh, looking for people to submit their original artwork as well as screenshots based on some prompts that I put up. Uh, I got a couple really awesome submissions that I'd like to show on stream right now. So give me one sec. Um, so the prompt that I had was kind of like as a tie into like the whole Shambhala thing was uh, depict two or more agents versus each other uh, in some kind of snowy landscape. <laughs> um, and uh, the first one we got up 
is uh, so it's points really for cool. creativity there. Uh, I didn't specify <laughs> what they would be doing to combat each other. You are technically correct, which is the best yeah. kind of correct. Snowball yeah. fight. Yeah, and, I look, and if you look closely, you can see a third shadowy dragon figure somewhere in the background. Yeah. <gasps> Sneaky. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. That's what dragons do. <laughs> All part of the model. This is awesome. Right? <laughs> shout out to... The uh, shout out to... Uh, this is Miley on the official forums. Thank you, Miley. Much really awesome. Good yeah, job. Yeah, really yeah, awesome great. stuff. The next one up is from user Erbos. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. So in, in stark contrast to the lighthearted snowball fight, this is a dark and very moody scene. Uh, I really, yeah, I really appreciate the composition as well as how the Templar character really pops out from the background as well. Yeah. You know, maybe it's just it's like a squad gun, you know, keep it uh, happy. Yeah, just like a little nerf gun. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Just like surprise. Without water, actually, I think if you had to, had to shoot water, someone probably would just freeze over <laughs> and kind of uh, impaling them. Can we get new uh, squirt gun weapon molds? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dual squirt gun. So thanks so much, Rebos, and thanks, yeah, thanks for your submissions. Um, I'll put a post up in the official forums as soon as possible to put, uh, put this up there, and as well as put a new prompt up for next week's Fan Art Friday. Uh, a couple other things also Very that cool. I wanted to clarify, um, just two quick things. Uh, so for those of you who participated in the Extra Life 2015 campaign, first of all, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Um, for you top donor winners, you will receive a bag that will contain your top donor t-shirt as well as uh, a prize. That will be made available through your item store window on the claim items uh, on or right after the issue 13 launch. Yep. Um, also, uh, there will be a 2015 t-shirt, not an orange one, it will be a blue one. We sincerely apologize for the mix-up. We will make sure that every single person that was supposed to get the blue participation shirt will get it as soon as it's implemented uh, when issue 13 launches. So appreciate your patience and thanks so much for con uh, contributing. Appreciate it. It's actually all, all done now. Like we uh, we fix it up. Mm -hmm. We just need to uh, to patch to patch it into the game so you guys can get it. So it's gonna be uh, because we're so close to releasing it. Thirteen, we're gonna do everything at the same time. So there you go. I think that about covers everything for this uh, issue thirteen preview. So that said, uh, we're gonna say goodbye and we're gonna um, we're gonna leave you as we've done with issue twelve with the cover uh, of issue thirteen. And here it goes. Bye bye. Bye, bye. guys. Hey folks, so, par pardon our error there, um, so we actually have a raffle to do. Ooh, it was so oh, secret we even forgot. Yeah. So, sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> so, <secret>. um, <laughs> this is really embarrassing, I apologize for that. So, uh, what we're going to be giving away as the uh, raffle prize for this is a collector's edition, a complimentary collector's edition of issue 13 when it's launched. So I'm going to start this up in just one moment. So close to uh, alas, it was uh, almost it was almost right. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> I tried. I'm sorry. Oh, that's funny. Shout out to Cesar for reminding me. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <sighs> so let's do it. Great. Collector's edition. Actually, while you go in, I'm going to show you some of the uh, some of the things you'll get from the collector's edition. Should have a new story if I can. Find it. Mm -hmm. Here we go. So these are some of the items. So a boombox, um, Ricky Biggins, like complete outfit, pretty much. Uh, and you're gonna get to get um, Rums uh, headphones, and then you might not recognize this, but this is Yuichi's um, right hand um, 
oven mitt, <laughs> which is <laughs> useful uh, if you need to uh, to protect yourself. Uh, Good, it is confirmed as an oven mitt. Someone did ask that in uh, Twitch chat. I was like, oh, I don't know if that's an oven mitt or not. <laughs> <laughs> so it is cool. UH's oven mitt. It's, uh, it's useful in uh, many situations. All right. I'm just going to let this go for just another couple seconds or so, and then I'm going to close the raffle out. This is going to be real exciting. All right. All right, we are going to stop it up. And then who is the winner? Congratulations to, and again, I apologize if I mispronounce your name, Mr. Ku Sun. Congratulations. Mr. Kusun. Mr. Kusun. Mr. Kusun. Congratulations. And thanks for staying after the stream. Sorry yeah. we are. Yeah, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry for the mix up there. Dang it. <laughs> now people are going to do this every single time. We I know, I like, just stayed in the secret <laughs> raffle. Uh, in case we screwed up so again. sorry. Darn it. Uh, well, congrats for that. I'm going to send a message to you uh, in Twitch chat. I'll get either your like in-game character name or an email address so that we can find your account and make sure that uh, we get the key for you as soon as it's made. Thanks, guys. And then for reals, <laughs> now we're Real actually... Goodbye. Chat sign off. Thanks, Have guys. Have a good weekend, Much guys. appreciated. See you next time. <laughs>